Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today I will be covering this pen from Tool. This, and that's pronounced uh, Tool, even though it's written as T-U-L. And this particular model is the ballpoint, as you can see there, solid metal barrel. Okay, now um, Tool, if you don't know, is a brand, in-house brand of Office Max slash Office Depot. And also, let's talk about pricing. This here is um, MSRPs for low 20s, so I think this was 21. Um, you might be able to get a little cheaper or a little more, but overall, let's just say MSRP for this is $21, okay? So, not quite uh, budget, but at the same time, it isn't you know going to put you out $100 plus, okay? So... We're moving up the ladder here, all right? Okay, so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look around the packaging. All right, so here on the front, you've already seen the main window with the pen. However, there's a little window here showing the tips of the two included extra ink cartridges. You have black and blue there, both 1.0 medium. Okay, now on the back. All right, so... Here we go, solid ballpoint pen, we've seen that. This is evidently precision engineered, hand tested for superior performance. All right, there we go, there's the Office Depot tie-in. And no, this is not sponsored by Office Depot, okay, so anyway. Uh, tool, experience the extraordinary. Okay, yeah, a lot of build up here, this pen better be awesome. Anyway, and then there's some of the uh, info, but out of all this, what I find interesting here is if you look down here, this is made in the Republic of Korea. Now, let's face it, most things like pens around this price point, usually you'd be seen made in China. So made in Korea, that, that's interesting. All right, so, and then there's the UPC. So on the bottom here of the packaging, we just have the sticker to hold it in. Nothing on the side. On the top, we do have this retail hanger that is not plastic, but rather it's like a kind of shiny ribbon. So... Yeah, it's kind of classy. And then also there's another sticker to hold the item in the package. Okay, so looks like we've looked at the entire package. All right, so overall impression of the packaging, yeah, it's good. Uh, they went the classy route here, so there's no loud attention-grabbing colors, and even the their brand name here is camouflaged into the background. So they are totally letting the item do it sell itself, right? And when you have something like this, that happens to so, so fact be shiny. That kind of works, right? Okay, also I'd like to know um, that you see here they've given you the extra ink cartridge, right? So you get to choose between blue and black ink. But what I was going to point out is that the most would have this be a window too. So you could see, hey, you get extra ink. But here, notice they're just leaving a little window. So you just get a little peek of the tips. And um, why do that? Why not brag about all the extras you get? because they don't want to take uh, the focus away from the pen itself. So, um, they're sticking with that mo method, and it looks like they're committed, and it's fully see, It seems to work quite well. So, oh, and the package does offer adequate protection for the pen. Um, the window here can be pushed in a little, but if this is being hung in, like, on a retail hanger, this is protection enough. Okay, so let's get to the unboxing. All right, so in order to open it, I took off the circle sticker that was on the top portion here. Go ahead and pry this open. And it looks like we can fish through this little ribbon pool. And now it's not only a retail hanger, but it's also the way to pull out the tray. Quite clever. Okay. And there it is. All right, before we get to the item, I just wanted to show you this. This came in on the back of the tray that has the pen in it. So. Here, this is just kind of telling you if you like the tool pen, you may like other things that are branded. And there's, I guess, an example. But on the back, it actually gives you some, I guess, highlights of the item that we're reviewing here. And information on the refills. And how to replace an ink cartridge, which I think most people will find isn't really necessary. You should know how to do that, but just in case, there it is. It's written out for you. Okay. Alright, so here we are. Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, this foam that um, these items are placed in is really dense. If I push, you can see it kind of leaves an imprint. So this is a real good protection. They could have easily used that real spongy foam that easily deforms, but that will not offer the protection that this here does. So. 
and also the um, if you see the sides of this tray there um, kind of see a reflection there so they have this uh, although it's just colored cardboard it really does keep the whole metal motif going so all right but of course the pen itself is real metal and then we have two ink cartridges a black and a blue and you can see the colors represented there at the base now it appears that these might be the two cartridges I'm not sure if there's one already in here I'll figure that uh, out in just a bit one would also come look down here if you look in there you can see they included I'll just pick one out so it's easier here we go so they can see against the door there they did include the little uh, wax bubble wax bead at the end so to keep the ink from running out I appreciate that All right, there you, go. you can see it better now and you can also see the construction of the ink cartridge I will say that this ink cartridge is can, is nice and hefty it's a, not a thin one but rather a kind of a chunky stout one which is good because obviously it means more ink let's see what it says on the ink cartridge if that comes up anything of note all right just some numbers there you can see there and then the back kind of give you an idea just how thick the cartridge is even though the walls are nice and thick this still does give you um, good volume inside so this is of course the blue cartridge now what I'm going to do is pick out the pen and we'll see if an ink cartridge is in there as well alright here we have the pen and pushing the back alright so it does look like they have a cartridge in the pen so that is a total of three cartridges so the two I showed you before are bonus alright so let's look at the pen now and um, yeah it's feels nice we have these slots here at the end for grip right and that that's a good idea because the rest of the pen is noticeably smooth up here on the clip you can see you got the brand written there this little okay so that's what um, grips your shirt uh, or whatever your pants pocket or breast pocket most likely so got some good uh, spring back there I also like how the clip here kind of part of the you see how this kind of comes out to meet the clip kind of makes the clip look like less of an afterthought so that's kind of cool styling there then of course we got the click test feels good all right let me go get my magnet and we'll do the what is and isn't metal test okay so I went ahead and tested and I found out this tip here is metal it doesn't attract the magnet but it is, it is metal it said so even on the little card that we looked at earlier and also if you look at it, it is really nicely polished okay so it also looks good but anyway uh, next here's that ink cartridge the included one is in fact black all right. Now, if you look here, this which the metal tip screws into, this here, this this little gray part at the end is plastic. The barrel, of course, is metal. The clip is metal, and then this and the little button to activate the ink going in and out is plastic. So, plastic, plastic, metal, metal, little bit of plastic, and then of course metal at the end. All right. Here's an up close look at the spring. It is not captive, so you can remove it, which again makes sense because you'll need to use this spring when you put in the refills. So don't lose this. And it looks to be symmetrical, so I use, you could probably put it in this way and it would still work because the spring pattern looks pretty much the same. And there we have the stamp. So doesn't say made in, just says Korea, but we know what that means. All right, so to give you an idea of size, we've got two things to compare it against. There in the middle, you have, um, well, of course, on the left is what we're reviewing. Then on in the middle, that's a Papermate Inkjoy pen, so better quality than your cheap Bic stick. 
but still you can kind of afford to lose it or have your coworkers take a handful off your desk, right? So you can buy it in bulk, but still a pretty decent pen for every day. Then on the right there, we have a fully um, or new and sharpened number two pencil. So now let's talk about weight. The pen on the left there, that is 20 grams. And then the number two pencil on the right is four grams. So, All right, so let's get to the writing test. These are the three pens I'll be comparing. Of course, the pen on the right is what the review is on. And then we have in the middle the Papermate profile. And then on the left, the clear Bic stick um, by in bulk pen. Okay, so now if you're not familiar with how I do the writing test, I basically take these pens, I put a piece of paper on top of a scale. I try to draw a line with as little pressure as possible, but still visible. And I record the amount of pressure in grams that it took. So what we're looking for is a nice dark line with a small number. All right, so here we are. On the left, we have the big stick, the middle, the paper mate, and then the right, the tool. So I realize that there might be some shadows and whatnot, um, so I can't do much about that. I kind of try to eliminate them as most as pop, as best as I can. But just with this panning shot, uh, you should probably be able to see that, well, as you'd expect, the better lines come with the tool. And you can see there, like, look at, I don't know, let's compare the 30 line. So again, that took 30 grams of pressure to draw that line. It's the second in on the tool page, as you see there. Okay, compare that line to the 30 here with the paper mate. And then if you go over here, you can see that the 30 line for the big stick is notably light as not as dark as the one from the profile and then the 30 of the tool is darker than the one of the profile so there you go the tool does draw the darker line with the same amount of pressure all right so I spent a little time using this pen and I'm back here to give you my impressions on it now I'm intentionally coming back over after only a short time using it and the reason why is I think that your um, the impressions on like the similarities and differences compared to other pens are more apparent right when you first start using it as opposed to using it for a month and getting so used to it that you kind of have a hard time comparing it to anything else. So that's why we're back now at this point. So let's go ahead and talk how is it to use. First of all, it is it, right away when you pick it up, you'll notice it's just not an everyday pen. It is, you know, a nicer pen. So this is the kind that will very likely disappear from the pen cup and never return if you allow people to borrow pens. All right. So now, with that being said, I would like to um, kind of, we looked at the little writing samples earlier, and you may have noticed, although it did write darker lines than something like this here, the Papermate profile, it wasn't a huge difference. There was a difference, but it wasn't, you know, shocking. And I think that kind of, the overall writing experience with this is kind of similar to that. It's nice, it's better, but um, it's nothing that you're going to write home. Can't get it right. Anyway, nothing you're going to write home about early. But it is a nice pen, and it does write well. Now, let's talk about the construction. Um, it is, as we did the weights earlier, but it is heavier than something like this. And if you go back and forth, you'll notice this is a denser pen. Again, over time you'll get used to it, but switch back to something like this just for reference. You'll go, well, this is you know a little heftier. Okay, and it does feel to be higher quality. It's just a little smoother. I don't know if it's coming up, but the things like this, this thin aluminum, you can feel the kind of the striations in it. As where this, it's just nice and smooth. So um, if that's your thing, you'll um, appreciate that. Okay, but let's talk about metal construction. And so this pen, as we already went over it earlier, but just to keep in mind that from this thumb all the way down to here is metal. Um, now, I know that there's that little connecting piece of plastic, which is hidden once it's closed, but it's a small piece of plastic. So you could almost make the argument this is solid metal from this thumb all the way down here. Now, compare that to something like this, where this is metal from, well, this thumb down to here, the other thumb. Now this whole bottom portion here is plastic. I mean this is, don't be fooled, this is plastic and this also is plastic underneath this grip here. So when you compare that, this is more of a metal pen than something like this. So you are getting an almost entirely metal pen. So um, that's something I was kind of looking for, so it checks that box. All right, um, also the, the clicking, the plunger, I've already done that earlier in the video, but it is, um, 
it it does feel just a little hardier than something like this. They both click nice, but this just feels to be a little more mm, steady, I guess you would say. Yeah. All right, so in conclusion, would I recommend this pen? Personally, I like it. However, I think people are going to kind of be divided into two camps on this one, mostly. Uh, there's going to be the, like myself, who think, you know, I like a nicer pen, but at the same time, I don't want to spend $100 plus dollars for it because should I lose it or someone takes it, I don't want to be super upset. So this is a kind of good mid-ground. And other people are going to just think that it's a waste of money, <laughs> that I can get a pen that writes almost as well, not quite as fancy, but it gets the job done, and why would I spend four times, five times more for something like this? So it depends on what side you're on on this issue, but I would say that it is a decent pen, and I'm glad I bought it. So.